Okay, well, welcome to this episode of AKM to Beat. Today we're gonna have a ride, and I'm gonna be riding on this bike. It's my gravel bike, and we don't have so much time before it gets dark. So let's go riding, start immediately. Today I also got my um, gimbal which I'm filming today today with. It's a Fujitech VG2 gimbal and the purpose of this ride today is to get some effective training that is not all too boring as a mountain biker often when you want to go riding you don't have so much time you're working and you come home late and it's a big project to bring your mountain bike out go to the nice trails that are like exciting enough for you that's the main reason why I'm riding the gravel bike because I could just bring it out and I can still get some very funny exciting riding with it and good training and there's not so much moving parts on it so the maintenance is easy it's a fairly cheap bike so I don't need to care about maintaining it so much so today we're going uh, not far away from where I'm living most of the time we're gonna be riding in the city around me this kind of riding is something I do often on evenings after work when I don't have much time and also in the winter because it's dark the trails are snowy and it's nice to get a challenging ride just nearby your home There used to be a trail here that were more visible than today but who cares doesn't matter let's go out here Now we have first a little power climb.
unfortunately I can feel that I haven't been riding as much as I would want to so my cardio is not the best I took care of That's why you ride to get a little better cardio. So this is a recreational area where a lot of people come running and walking. So what you have to think about when when you're riding in areas like this you have to respect the other people around you even if that means you have to step off the bike oh, didn't st start to show up too bad if it ain't on Strava, it didn't happen. Whoa. Whoa. I have some roots and what's extra fun with this bike is that. It feels really raw. Change my mind there. Anyway, maybe not. Maybe I just bail out. Chicken out. Or miss you just. Anyway, doesn't matter. Now, here's another fun feature it's a dirt track. Really nice one. It's no way though. I'm gonna jump on this bike. I'm not even good at jumping on a proper bike. Not yet, at least. Now we go back down again. Yep. I don't know if I want to call that a jump. Whoop. Okay. So now I'm <coughs> starting to feel a little bit warm it doesn't feel as bad in the body as it did when I started so now we have people here there's a dog always say hello hey they didn't say hello back but that doesn't matter maybe she didn't hear me whoop or for whatever reason, I don't know, she didn't say hi. Doesn't matter, I always say hi. And give people you meet a big smile. Why would you want to be angry and not smiling? That's a good question. Okay, so. Here's the straight to get some rest and get the legs into working differently.
when you are approaching people from the behind, you should have a bell on the back on the bike. And if you don't, you should try to make them aware of your presence in some way. Maybe let the free wheel spin, say hello to them, or just slow down and pass them in a calmer way so you don't scare them. Okay, so this was the first area where I go around and ride. Now I have a transport to the next area that is in the forest and where there is some trails. So this is a perfect opportunity to think of your cadence and your breathing and riding in a steady pace. And try to relax on your bike. Okay, so we're on a gravel bike. Let's talk more about that. A gravel bike is not a cyclocross bike, although it looks the same in many ways. The difference is, however, that a cyclocross is a race bike. It's made for racing and there is certain rules that applies to the sport of cyclocross such as there's a maximum limit on how wide your tires can be. So quite often the cyclocross bikes are built upon those regulations. So in general, you have bigger tire clearance on a gravel bike than you have on a cyclocross. And And besides that, that's prob probably a lot of other differences as well. However, they are very similar. You could definitely ride cyclocross on a gravel bike and you could do gravel biking on a cyclocross. Though, if you're going on an epic adventure and you want to pack your bike and stuff like that, it's often easier to put your package on a gravel bike because it's had holes where you could put your stuff on. Compared to a mountain bike, the gravel bike is obviously there's no suspension, which you necessarily not have on a mountain bike neither if you're running fully rigid. But your tires are definitely narrow and the geometry, such as the head angle, is often steeper on the gravel bike and your top tube is higher and the wheelbase is shorter so the ride is going to be like more 
agile, I suppose is the right word, more agile, it's gonna react more on the trail, which demands more of you as a rider to being able to find proper lines and also to ride smoother which will get you make you into a technically better rider because you have to think of your line choice more actively than you're doing on a mountain bike especially if you're riding a full suspension mountain bike where you could just right over most obstacles. Here's the dog with the long leash, slow it on. Hey! And as I said before, I always say hello to, hello to people. So, but because of all this I said about the gravel bike, that also makes the bike in some ways more fun to ride. It's like, as a lot of people say, it's like riding an old school mountain bike, going back to the roots, kind of. And there's also something very satisfying about riding quick on gravel. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the sound, the sensation of the road, or a mixture of everything, or just for the simple reason that cycling is always fun, no matter what kind of bike you're riding. So here we are in another park again. This is another area where it's not really for biking or cycling. So this is a place where I have to go riding myself. Just to avoid to get too much attention and being something that people could annoy themselves on. More people, another time to hello. Another time to slow down, say hello. Okay, so. Now I'm going to approach a small climb and after that I think I'm going to start to head back home. Normally I would ride it longer. I think the best riding time to get something out of it is 
at least one hour, one, one and a half hour. The reason for that is that you, at least for me, it takes about 20 minutes before my body is warm and operating in a good way. And when the body is in that condition, that's where I want to riding. There you go. Probably heard that sound. Thankfully, I didn't kill my wheel. I'm riding tubeless, which, if I didn't, I most likely would have had a puncture. And in my back wheel, I have something that I call Hack Norris, which is a foam rim and puncture protection it's not made for cyclocross but i managed to squeeze it into my wheel and tire anyway there's another product there's other products as well for that purpose uh, one of them is something i call kush core kush core which i ride on my downhill bike and enduro bike. Here's a dog. Slow down when you see dogs. Some dogs reacting weirdly on bikes. Hey! So, slow down. Show people respect. And they will give you respect as well. Anyway, the Kush, Kush Core. Enduro bike, downhill bike. And they also announced they're gonna Hello, hello. Uh, Kushcore also announced that they're gonna release a product for cyclocross, which is gonna be very interesting. Uh, hopefully, that is possible to hey to use on uh, a cross-country bike as well. At least I'm hoping for it, and I feel pretty sure that it will be possible to get into the tire and use a lot of cycle thrust. But what I really like with the Kush Core is that it transforms the bike, the feeling of the bike, into something else. Something that feels completely different in the same way as going from tubes to tubeless did when I first took this, that step. The Kush Core acts like a damper inside your tire. So the principle of it is that there's an air spring in your tire which you pump in your air. It's basically the air inside the tire. And then there's this foam that are set against the rim. And that acts like it as a damper. So when you're hitting a bump, stone, root or whatever, it goes through the air and then the damper take care of it. What that does is that it eliminates a big risk of getting a uh, puncture but it also means that you're not going to bounce around as much as you did because the damper is dampening the spring <coughs> so you're getting a smoother and more controlled ride and you could ride at a lower tire pressure which gives you more grip and that might revolutionize the sport of cyclocross 
Yeah, and I also forgot to mention that it's also stiff enough the sidewalls of the tire. So if you're running on Enduro and you're running heavy duty tires, or same on downhill, you could probably go down and get lighter tires. But on a cyclocross and a gravel bike, and also on a cross country and all bikes, the sidewall is going to be the stiffness of the tire is going to be higher, so you're not going to risk burping your tire off the rim. So there, there's a lot of advantages of this system, and I am really looking forward for this product to be released for cyclocross and uh, cross-country well yes for a cyclocross but it, as I said I'm pretty confident that you could use it on your cross-country bike as well um, the downside the obvious downside with it is of course the weight and the weight on the enduro slash downhill version of it is almost 250 grams each so it's a lot of weight rotating mass that you're adding to your bike though it's definitely worth it especially if you're mostly going downhill that extra weight stabilize the bike and besides that it's the change that of the feeling that you get in the bike the advantages of that is much 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 greater than the disadvantage of the weight that you add to your bike Okay, uh, yeah, transport back home. How long have I been riding? My, my Garmin said that I've been riding for 21 minutes and then I missed to turn it on. So a little bit longer, 30 minutes. Not the longest ride that I was riding yesterday, so I feel pretty fine with this short ride. I'll consider it as a film run and also a little bit of a recovery ride. And of course when you get new stuff, such as my new gimbal, which I'm gonna review more later on. Then you want to go out to ride if you're gonna want to would want to try your new stuff and see how they work and for those who don't know me uh, my background comes from downhill skateboarding which I were taking extremely seriously a couple of years ago. I was racing in the World Cup uh, and I was racing in World Championships. Uh, yeah, I took it very seriously. I had sponsors and all kind of stuff. And unfortunately, I had a quite serious injury where I fractured um, my right leg really really bad the fracture were uh, that bad that the doctors were not even sure if i would be able to walk uh, normally on my leg and has to fast forward uh, later on in the rehab after about 10 months on crutches and a couple of surgeries i we're sitting on a bike 
a spinning bike and all of a sudden that just activated muscles and blood flow in my leg it was like it wake woke up my leg and i decided to get a bike so i got a road bike and i was riding this road bike and training on a road bike with a fractured leg and i got better then i got into mountain biking did a lot of cross country uh, starting to do enduro after the enduro well that's where i am now last year i did a lot of enduro racing and for this year i've started to think what should what's going to be my project this year and the project for this year is going to be um, downhill racing but in a pretty small scale because i'm also buying a house and i'm also decided to make my youtube channel into my cycling project and start to produce more content for it uh, so you're going to see me ride further on you're going to see me getting completely different possibilities for riding i'm moving to a house closer to the nature closer to the area where i and you are riding and when it comes to the downhill racing there's something called south swedish downhill cup which is just nearby so i'm not doing any major trips to big super epic races i'm just doing what's in my nearby area and so keep your eyes open on the channel and uh, comment and tell me what you think tell me what you want to see and of course i would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel So, I said thank you for looking, thanks for riding with me today, take care, and you yourself be happy, and keep your eyes open for more content. wonder if this is gonna be a good idea ah, yep yeah, not the stupidest thing I've done on a bike ooh I could feel that in the rim but the bike survived okay Let's have a look on the bike, shall we? Okay. A gravel bike first of all I put a wide handlebar in it it's an off-road drop handlebar with a 50 millimeter stem Shimano hydraulic brakes Tiagra classified it's the bulky one they're not very beautiful but they works very good actually have good braking performance 
Tiagra with an oval chain ring. I am running 38 teeths and in the back I also have a Tiagra Red Raider with a 10 speed cassette. It works good, does what it's supposed to do. I'm running a one by drive train as you saw before. What I like about this is that the parts are cheap. Well, rel relatively cheap and they works good. I'm running Schwalbe X1, which have really good grip. They have quite big side knobs and the tread pattern in the middle actually rolls, rolls well on flat ground and tarmac. I like the crank riders pedals. Main reason for that is mainly because I like them on the enduro and downhill bike, so it's better, easier to just have one system on all your shoes. And what more could we say? It's a superior bike. Nothing too fancy. And I have a carbon fork that takes off the vibrations together with carbon seat post, which swallows vibrations for roads and makes your ride more comfortable.